Major issues, escalations are taking place today, right now with China at the forefront. I'm going to break it down all for you right here. In today's video, the first thing I want to talk about is China's warning for Ukraine. Really important information. The second thing is the emperor's big speech. I'll cover what's important to you. And the third thing is US-China conflict that is really escalating today. All of that and more. Let's begin. All right, so here we go. With the current grim security situation in Ukraine, China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Chinese Embassy in Ukraine on Saturday urged Chinese citizens in the country to enhance safety precautions and evacuate. The embassy will assist in organizing the evacuation of people in need. This is coming from a, directly from a Chinese government official. So it's not as if you're just hearing this Willy Nelly coming out around the corner. This is somebody within the government saying this. At the same time, we have this article here. Chinese nationals in Ukraine sign up for evacuation after call from FM. You could see it here, the foreign ministry, same information saying it's time to come home. What I find very interesting about this is that we were here all of this time, several months, seeing the issues coming out of Ukraine all along. We've watched Russia, Ukraine back and forth, NATO, the US, all of these factors have been happening. And China, while they have talked about it before, they've never gone to this degree and actually said it's time to evacuate. What does this tell you? They would probably have a little bit more insight as to what's going on inside of Ukraine versus let's say on the US side. China is very good friends as we'll talk about in this video with Russia and they would probably have advanced warning of any activity. So is there going to be an escalation? Well, only time will tell, but I think this is very important to keep an eye on. Let's take a look at the next one. I told you about the emperor's speech that happened. This is every five years. And in this case here, he went on for two hours referring to many things. And I wanted to break down just the important ones for you. We will continue to strive for peaceful reunification with, with the greatest sincerely and utmost effort, but we will never promise to renounce the use of force. We will reserve the option of taking all measures necessary. That's huge right there. Okay. In this speech, he's saying, hey, we want to peacefully reunite, but if we have to, we're going to use force. The wheels of history are rolling on towards China's reunification and the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. The complete reunification of our country must be realized and it can be without a doubt to be realized. Okay, he's basically just saying that this has to happen. It is going to happen and we are going to push for it. This is important. Okay, saying that they want to make this happen and they're going to do it. Whoever steps in their way, this is a problem. That's what he says here. He had a clear message to those who want to thwart China's rise. You will fail. In a speech that lasted almost two hours, he let the world know that China wouldn't change course even as it faces dangerous storms in a more hostile world. Instead, he declared the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation now on an irreversible historical course and more forcefully offered China up as an alternative to the US and its allies. Now, we've been studying this a long time. In fact, I covered the US-China relations in my book, my first one. That's why I knew this would be the case for the foreseeable future. We are watching this balance that has really been thrown off in the last few years. China holds almost a trillion dollars worth of US debt that has been declining for several years. And you look at what they've been doing geopolitically, they're signing up with all these partners, the BRICS nations, and so on. We'll get into that more in the split screen where I'll break everything down. But I want you to stick with me here. China's international influence, appeal, and power to shape the world has significantly increased. China's modernization offers humanity a new choice for achieving modernization. In addition to this, confronted with drastic changes in the international landscape, we have maintained a firm strategic resolve and shown a fighting spirit. 
Throughout those endeavors, we have safeguarded China's dignity and core interests to keep ourselves well positioned for pursuing development and ensuring security. What's he talking about? Just speak some English. This is basically saying, Taiwan, we're going to go for it. We are going to have shared prosperity. He mentioned that multiple times in the speech, essentially saying, if there's all these billionaires around in China, we're going to take from them. We're also going to make sure that nobody takes what they were not given. Okay, this is really important you've seen all these different things that have been happening also they're going to go for more lockdowns more strict measures this is very apparent at the same time we are watching economically how they want to grow how they want to strengthen their systems and they're going for it okay so everything that he said in the speech was stuff we already knew but now it's being put front and center it is very clear what their actions are and what their intentions are and that brings us to this you can see that the u.s government has chip export controls that are designed to give the u.s an advantage u.s is also concerned about china's use of ai for military use u.s is working with allies on export control measures they want to prevent china from getting access to these super powerful semiconductors these chips are they going to be able to actually do that we'll see but of course all of this or most of it is in Taiwan, and that's what it really comes down to. China's emperor vows victory in tech battle after US chip curbs, nation to speed up technology self-reliance drive. According to the leader, US aims to stop China from getting capabilities seen as a threat. So you could see the balance that has been really thrown off at this time. You look at that on multiple levels. What happened with the tariff war? What happened with all the commodities? All the soybeans all these activities that were taking place over the last several years and now have really escalated to a point in which we have to start questioning what will happen tomorrow it isn't the same as we had just a few years ago i thought this was really important to cover why the war over chips chip making has become an increasingly precarious business new plants have a price tag of up to 20 billion dollars take years to build and need to run flat out for 24 hours a day to turn a profit the scale required has reduced the number of companies with leading edge technology to just three okay tsmc that's the big boy okay you've heard of that before of course we have samsung and intel Chip makers are under increasing scrutiny over what they sell to China, the largest market for chips. Remember that China has so many computers, so many cell phones. They make everything. They don't necessarily use that all for domestic consumption. They may ship that back to companies, individuals, governments all around the world, right? Shifts in the global supply chain and recent shortages as governments rushing to subsidize new factories and equipment from the US and Europe to China and Japan. This is really important, okay? So the chips are really one of the focuses that they've got going on right now. And it's not just China, this is the US, this is all others. And as I will talk about momentarily, those holding the commodities of any kind are going to be positioned very well. Look at the commodity super cycles that have taken place. This is from 1960 up until the present. And you can see what happens here. There's the breakout. There's the consolidation periods. And now some have suggested that we are only at the bottom of a super cycle, a generational opportunity in commodities. This is just basically the comparison looking at commodities to the Dow Jones. And look at this. Unbelievable. We've never seen it this low in relation to each other. This chart goes all the way back to 1920. And so you see this as an issue to those who need a lot of commodities. Perhaps their currency is too weak. Maybe they don't have the alliances that they once did. It could be any number of factors. And I'll break that down more in a minute. Economists now expect a recession and job losses by next year. And when you enter into a recession, and if it gets worse, what is the next step? Well, depending how deep it goes, the obvious solution that they tend to provide is a war. And that is front and center, a very big concern right now.
So let's break it down right here. You could see what's been happening with China and the US. And this is supposed to be something that everybody should be really aware of. Unfortunately, they're not. They're looking at the political side of things when we should be looking at the economic. China is making strong moves towards a new international order with it at the center. Very important, right? Countries with commodities like Russia are positioned well, having good strategic ties with China. They're going to do business. They're going to be importing that. They're going to say, Russia, we're good friends. BRICS nations, we're good friends. Let's do business. Semiconductors are now an essential component of an economy because everything has them in it. Okay? And national security relies on it. So if they're going to be building all these things, they're going to have to have chips in them. And if you can't get chips tomorrow, well, then you've got a problem. Taiwan is sitting in the middle of this battle between West and East, despite where it's located geographically. The US wants to ensure China doesn't take full control of Taiwan, potentially cutting off semiconductors to the US. So imagine that we entered into a full scale war and China had full dominance over Taiwan and they would say, OK, no more semiconductors. It would turn the US dark overnight. I don't see that necessarily happening, but this is so important to be mindful of. Watch your exposure, you as an individual, okay? Watch your exposure to companies and assets that are not considered essential. We're moving into different times. So a lot of people right now, they may have their money in something that is, I mean, I don't know how else to say it, it's just not essential. And those type of things are not going to be what really grows, what really maintains its integrity over a period of potential concern, war, and all these battles that might be forming. We want to have what we know is going to be valuable in the coming years. So that is always the same. It's real, tangible goods are always going to have that benefit when you look at it over a period of time. You can compare that in ratios like I did, looking at the stock market, the commodities, and so on, but there's so many other ways to do it as well. Look. Did you find this video informative? You probably did. If so, you want to subscribe because tomorrow's video, I'm going to get into some incredible stuff and you want to be here. See you tomorrow.